Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Simon Jux, and I'm working at Here Technologies. Um, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how to survive the life cycle. And this is mainly around the architecture components and how we actually deal with the certain kind of life cycles that they are now uh, introduced to us. And uh, for this, I'm going to do a little bit of a short introduction to this kind of, uh, to this kind of uh, let's say, objects, you could say. Um, so in general, everybody is more or less aware of the architecture components. Raise your hand if you have heard of it. I, uh, I think everybody knows nowadays about this. I just give a very short recap, like two, three minutes, just to be really on the same page, because some of the things that I'm going to talk about later are going to have to have some recap, basically. So um, first of all, the life cycle. The life cycle is basically just an object that was introduced to hold the state of an activity or a fragment and basically represent, not hold, but represent the state of activity or fragment and give you the opportunity to be notified about it. So this is a, sounds simple, but it is actually something that was, that changed a lot in the architecture or in writing uh, good uh, applications. Because now, now you can actually make some guarantees and you can also subtract certain kind of aspects from your application that should not, never touch an activity or a fragment. Also, a very interesting part of this is that the life cycle is actually um, provided by a certain kind of guarantee. So the, the steps here, are like on create, on start, they are always basically called in the same kind of order. And building on top of this is way, uh, way better now because previously in the uh, with different Android versions, you had some issues with this kind of uh, ordering. As a second object that we, uh, just to recap quickly, we have the lifecycle owner, and I'm going to talk a little bit about more lifecycle owners uh, later. And it's basically just an object that holds a lifecycle, and so you could build your own lifecycle owner if you need to, if you want to build your own UI framework. And last but not least, in this kind of the three important objects, is the lifecycle observer. And the lifecycle observer is helping us to actually realize when something happened, when something changed within the lifecycle. And here I took the Android X lifecycle um, a library, and um, there you have some new kind of observers, like for instance the full lifecycle observer, which is a really nice uh, different implementation than using the annotations, which is a little bit less efficient. How have you already started to use Android X? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> well, it's pretty fresh, right? So, um, on top of this, uh, Google in um, the IO 2017 introduced uh, a very useful uh, object that is called the live data, live data object. And this is just basically an emitter observer pattern where you can hold an object and it's going to react uh, on your life cycle. And um, this sounds very simple, but it's actually changed a lot, at least in our architecture and how we build applications. Because now you don't care about the life cycle anymore. You're basically just emitting data, you're producing it, and whenever anything uh, happening to the life cycle, we just get informed correctly. Uh, very important here to mention it, that it starts to emit data when it's uh, fresh, when you come actually uh, in the life cycle of on start, and it's going to automatically remove all the observers and on destroy. And we're going to come to this point in a second because it's actually important to realize this. Last but not least is um, an concept that's the, the view model that is basically holding everything together across uh, activities or fragments when they are destroyed. And this is the view model. A view model is nothing more than basically um, kind of a retained state where you can add a live data object or any kind of other objects that are going to be hold across basically the life cycle of your um, of an activity or fragment. So with this uh, three, five uh, simple classes, you can actually do really, really cool stuff. And, but how do you actually bring everything together? So first of all, from Android X on, we have those kind of life cycles built in, and also with the um, with the app component 26, I think, um, you get all of this life cycle um, objects basically uh, built in into, into the standard libraries. And uh, there are three of them that you should realize. And uh, I'm going to talk about the last one in a second. And the first two are basically the fragment lifecycle. 
owner, uh, sorry, the fragment activity lifecycle owner, and then the other one is the fragment lifecycle owner, and the new one that is introduced now with the, in the Google I.O. 2018 is the view lifecycle owner. And that's a particular one because it's a little bit different. It's not, uh, it's not totally intuitive what it is doing and why is it there. Who have you heard actually of the uh, view lifecycle owner? Okay, just a few hands raised, so this is good, because I think this talks mainly about uh, putting awareness on this new object. And this new... Okay, so how does it work? So this is just a general recap, and maybe you're realizing the style a little bit, because I copied it from the Google I.O. slides, more or less. So um, on the top, you can actually see the, uh, uh, a view model that holds some kind of data, in a live data object, and it's going to emit something. And this something is going to eventually be drawn on a fragment. But the fragment first needs to go through some kind of cycle. And the cycle starts with onCreate, so this is just a normal uh, call, uh, the normal lifecycle method. At this point, we're going to actually register, because that's the nice thing about those kind of lifecycle methods, you can just do everything in one uh, method, in the, in the onCreate method in this case. We start to observe, but at this point we are not getting actually the, this kind of value delivered right away, but uh, we kind of have to wait until we are notified to be on start. On start, at this point, it's actually safe to draw anything on the screen and changing basically the view. And then we actually get delivered this kind of object and we can do something about it. Interesting is then if we are moving towards, like if we're rotating, for instance, a fragment, then we are actually uh, gonna, of course, we get the on stop event and uh, we are marking our observer as inactive. At this point, we will not deliver any kind of further update anymore. So this means any object B that you can see here on the right is not actually going to be delivered and it's also going to be marked internally as not delivered to this particular observer, which is an important aspect. So then the fragment is going to be destroyed, all the resources are going to be removed, and then eventually uh, also the observer is going to out-remove itself. So no more boilerplate code to just go on destroy and uh, unregister your observer. It's a very, very uh, clean setup, basically. And in, in our applications, actually it helped us a lot to have a very, very simple way to describe what is happening in your application. So what is happening next? We have the rotation case, so once you rotate the fragment, a new fragment is going to be uh, created. We go through the same stages, on create is going to be called. We start observing again, and then we're going to go through on start, and on start, we got actually the value that was not delivered previously is now delivered freshly to us, and so from there on, we can actually draw the updated value. So you can realize that it's, it's basically a very simple concept, but it actually helps uh, a lot to build uh, anything that is going asynchronous and, uh, and anything that is, um, is, shouldn't be bound to the view. Uh, who of you is actually aware of this kind of uh, life cycle and understood it already previously? Okay, that's nice. Perfectly. Then I hope you're going to have a little bit more input on the or fun on the next part. So this helped us actually to do simple setups like this. So you have basically in on create or the fragment, you could actually just get the view model, and then from the view model, you would basically just observe the. Um, uh, you would just observe the, uh, with the fragments lifecycle, you would observe the, the changes on the view model, and then you get actually delivered this object B. Who of you knows actually that there's something wrong about this, or problematic? Uh, just a few hands. So who of you is using this kind of construct? Okay. Not too many, actually, so <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay, so um, what is problematic about this? Um, so if we are not talking about the case of rotation where a fragment is going to be destroyed, but we're talking of the case when we're actually moving from one fragment to another in a fragment manager. So like a backstack case. You're moving like from one fragment to another and then you go back to your previous one. So a few of you might know that uh, at this point we are actually uh, keeping the fragment in the memory. But something else is happening. So first of all, let's go for the uh, same cases. So we have the live data object that is going to emit the object A. We go through on start and we're going to draw this again on the fragment. Then 
we are actually moving to the other fragment. At this particular point, we are keeping the current fragment actually in the fragment manager. We just call on stop. Then we're going to detach the fragment from the view, and we're going to start the other fragment. The other fragment is started at this particular point, and it's going to do its magic, whatever we need to do that, and then we eventually press back. When we press back, the, um, the previous fragment is going to be reattached. And then it's going to its own cycle again. It's going to call on start, or on start is going to happen. And then we mark our uh, fragment as active again. Who of you sees a, an, an issue with this? Because we have to have the same observer as previously, we actually marked A as already de delivered. But what happened in detach and et attach again is that we actually destroyed the view. So there is a brand new view at this particular moment when we are reattaching the fragment. And this uh, view doesn't know anything about A. So what you're going to show at this particular moment is an outdated view. So this is a problematic uh, issue. So you can solve this issue with two kinds of ways. One way would be to actually tell the view to render this object A again, just calling this cluttery setup, which is making your app very ugly, basically calling an onCreate, they change the view method that is basically going to be used again in on, create, on view created, where we basically check if we have actually a value, and then we call it again to basically redraw it. At this point, you are basically safe, you are on the same page like the object A. Another setup many developers are using is actually this. And this is also what our application is, has used a couple of weeks ago until I actually fixed and removed the bug that is coming from this. And so we actually would, on, on view created, we would listen to the, to the observer. And uh, so we are fine because it's a new view. And then we get also a new observer. At this particular point, we would always be uh, notified a, when, the, when any object was, uh, was changed with this observer. But the problem with this is that we are still using the fragments lifecycle. The fragments lifecycle is not destroyed so, because we are keeping it in the memory. And so when we're coming back, we will call this method a second time. And of course, can you imagine what happens at this particular time? We will create a second observer, and suddenly we have two observers. And we also keep, actually, we can keep a, a reference to the previous view, and by that, leaking memory. So a way to actually solve this problem is to call an on-destroy view, remove the, pre the previous observer. This was a fix, but of course you can see it clutters your code a lot. Especially if you have a lot of live data objects that you want to listen to, you're going to have a lot of this kind of uh, boilerplate code. And of course this is jeopardizing the whole idea actually on how to use uh, live data and the life cycle correctly. Okay, so in the Google I.O. 2018, they realized, okay, we have to actually dedicate a certain kind of lifecycle for this, and this is the view lifecycle owner, or the view lifecycle. This is a very particular lifecycle that is only available after on create view, and until on destroyed view. And with this one, you're actually totally safe, because at this time, when you actually come back to the, uh, when the view is going to be destroyed, this is going to be marked as, uh, as destroyed and the observer is going to be removed automatically. So you have, again, your beautiful setup. You don't have to do anything uh, that is uh, uh, additional remove codes. And um, the architecture components are coming back to their promise to be very simple and help you with the ap uh, activity develop application development. But now, you actually have two life cycles. And this is actually really confusing because suddenly you have to decide which one do I use? Do I use the fragment life cycle? Do I use the, view frag the fragment view life cycle? Which one of those is actually the right one to use at which kind of moment? And so now we're going to step back a little bit and look at the architecture and try to figure out what would be a good practice actually to use which of these kind of uh, life cycles at what time. So in general, we, discussed, we um, observed like a certain kind of pattern around applications and how they are abstracted basically in different kind of steps. And so one of the uh, levels of abstractions is that we are using the navigation 
basically, which is the top, most top level abstraction of in a, any kind of application. The, in this kind of abstraction, we're gonna do things like starting activities, starting fragments, dealing with the backstack, etc. So this is the, you can say, the higher level. Then in the second level of uh, abstractions, we have use cases. They're gonna deal with your individual business logic on a screen, basically. Things that you're doing there is uh, composing views, showing errors, dialogues, dealing maybe with permissions. It's basically your core uh, uh, business logic uh, implemented. And then there's a third level, which is basically a cross-cutting level for if you want to reuse certain kind of aspects of your, uh, of your, uh, in, your acti in your application. Um, that is basically like showing, um, showing data, manipulating data. You can think of this like, for instance, like a, a, a list view with a complicated filter mechanism that you want to reuse across all of your uh, activity or application. So these are the three basic uh, a, um, <clears throat> abstractions, and I'm gonna now discuss how we can actually deal with this kind of three abstractions with the life cycle. So there's a simple approach. In a simple approach, the uh, activity is basically gonna observe a view model. And the view model is taking care of both navigation and use case. So you can think of this as a very simple activity that uh, deals with uh, composing different kind of fragments on the screen to show um, everything related to the use case. And if you move to another use case, it's going to take care of uh, composing these use cases again together. And uh, so this is basically the, uh, it would still work as the, in the other live data example, whenever anything changes in the, in the view model, it would basically move to the other state. So what, what is it doing? It actually shows fragments. And uh, the fragments are here actually observing with the, uh, with the view lifecycle. Not with the fragments lifecycle, but the, f uh, the view ones. And to just basically avoid all of kind of, all kind of pitfalls here. And uh, we are observing then any kind of object that is dealing only with the view. So you have a very, let's say, simple uh, construct. So if you're just building a simple application, I think this construct is good enough to basically hold most of the cases. Um, so how does it look like in code? So you have the, uh, the view model. So here I used the example where I have like something like a name list view model, like where a list of names. And uh, you have a state here, that's the, that's the view state. It's only the fragment example because I avoided the activity for, re for the example's purpose. And then in the fragment we have, um, we're gonna, uh, in on create on view created, we're gonna use the view lifecycle owner to basically observe only the changes of this particular list, and we are good to go. And that's gonna be like for a simple application, I guess the 90% case for you to basically manage both moving around from one fragment to the other, composing everything, and having kind of a safe uh, ground here. But if you're moving a little bit further, and as we do in our application, actually we're growing bigger, you kind of have to do an uh, a one level higher abstraction. And here you actually start to think of the navigation as something that is completely independent of the use cases. You're basically just saying, okay, I'm navigating from A to B, I don't really care what is in B. I'm just gonna basically uh, tell the, frag uh, the fragment to just be displayed and I'm not actually dealing with what is inside the fragment, more or less. So this is a very nice way to actually build applications because at this point you don't actually have to deal with any kind of business logic that is low level. And so what is a the fragment then doing? For internally it will basically still deal with the two life cycles. It's gonna use a higher level of a life cycle to deal with the use case specific things and I'm gonna come back to an example of what this could be. And then with the all view related stuff, it's gonna still observe in the, in the view model uh, with the view life cycle. So you would have basically two separated uh, parts of a, in, within your fragment. How does this look in code? So first of all, as I, as I promised, um, the use case could look like this. So like you enter the fragment and you have different kind of aspects of, your, of, uh, of this particular business logic, like you want to show a list, you want to maybe edit a name by long pressing on it or something like that. You, want, you have to deal with some kind of network error because you fetched the list from the from network or you are just in the loading state at this particular moment. So these are certain kind of things. They are not really view related in particular. Uh, 
uh, we're just describing a high-level situation of this particular use case. And then you still have the, uh, so you would represent this in a live model, a live data object that is the use case state. And then last but not least, you would have still the known uh, view state that is basically representing the, uh, the um, live data object of the state. And you would update uh, all kinds of uh, uh, constructs here, you might need actually for each individual part of the view, you might need an own live data object here. So, this sounds a little bit cluttery because you're actually putting a lot of code into your view model at this point. This kind of screams on a, putting this in a one level deeper actually. So, uh, I forgot actually to show the, the fragment, how this is implemented. So, in the fragment, you actually, in on create, you will still use the fragments lifecycle to observe the use cases parts, and then you would show and hide basically views, more or less, or compose them, reinflate them, whatever is necessary actually for you to actually dealing with this particular problem. And then in on view created, you would use the view lifecycle owner to still observe basically the view state uh, of your view model. And then you're still basically safe uh, to only deal with and update your view. Okay. So in our application uh, that we are building, we are coming actually to this situation where we are finding ourselves more and more that this kind of approach that I just presented, which we are actually using in a similar way, is actually not scalable enough because we might have to deduce, um, we, we might have to, we have way more view aspects that have to be maybe moved to a different part and they have to be reused because we are keeping the same patterns across uh, the application again and again. And so, of course, um, it would be a pity to basically just rewrite this kind of views over and over again. So basically, um, we are moving more and more towards uh, actually composition than using the extension case where you would just basically take the view model and extend it to have a different kind of functionality. The good parts about extension, about composition is that you have really clean uh, responsibilities and very clean uh, documentation of what your component can do actually. So, and testability is actually really great. So how does this look like? In the composition case, again, high level activity is taking care only of the navigation, still the same. It's gonna show fragment, and the fragment is only taking care of one thing. And that's with its own life cycle, it only takes care and observes the use case uh, information. And once you actually get any kind of information about how to change the use case, you're actually going to deliver it on the third level, actually, on the view container or like a view level, you could say, where we're going to use the view lifecycle. So this is going to be then hold internally, and there it's actually observing its own view model, and it's going to update uh, basically aspects of itself accordingly by using the same. So how does this look in code? As an example, so in um, again we have the same kind of view model, but now it's split up. So I don't show this again here anymore. So the one part of the of the view model is actually in on create. We're gonna we can switch around. A, Depending on the use case, we can switch around and change basically the view. Like for instance, we would change the visibility of the name list view. So this is just not, not a simple kind of view, it's a little bit of an extended custom view, you could say. In on view created, we will actually not use the lifecycle, but pass it down to the view. And if you followed the Google I.O. 2018, you actually have seen that, um, especially with data binding, this is a, it's going exactly into this kind of direction, where we're actually passing that directly with the view lifecycle owner, passing directly the lifecycle to the data binding component that is dealing with binding directly to the view. But here now you have a more general pattern that you can actually use uh, by building uh, views that you can reuse across your application. And so we pass this down, and this is how a possible uh, a custom view could look like with Kotlin. It's actually quite nice because it's just uh, the constructor is very, uh, very thin. And uh, in the at attach method, we are doing exactly what we used to do actually in the fragment. We just basically gonna um, get the view model, and then we're gonna observe it, but with the given life cycle. And of course, this is helping a lot of testability because this is not related to any kind of uh, activity or fragment code, and it's really uh, plain and simple. 
A good other aspect of this is that you can now compose your views actually with uh, higher level logic uh, in, in XML and you can give it at attributes to actually instantiate a different kind of behavior that you can then pass to your view model and you have a basically a different kind of higher level view. And this is, ever, that's all. <laughs>